this lecture we will speak about signal modulation and beats. In the previous classes we had discussed about signal analysis in particular time domain signal analysis, frequency domain signal analysis and the other one being time frequency analysis or analysis which is done for non stationary signals like uh, wavelets or short time Fourier transform and then uh, empirical mode decomposition. But you know signals come in many types out of machines. So, when we have a machine and I put a transducer on it to measure some signal. X t. Now, depending on the characteristics of this machine or if there is another event happening machine 2, machine 1, component 2, component 1. So, these would affect the signal type and so on. So, as you know signal basically conveys information. So, depending on the source type, the signals exhibit certain features you know, which in other words could be modulated signal or signal beating. I will first come to the signal beating which is very easier to understand. If I have two independent machine source okay. like we see here. If I have two independent signal f naught is one signal and f naught plus delta f is another signal. So, if my f 1 equals to f naught and f 2 is equal to f naught plus delta f, where as you would have seen in the frequency domain, if I have two sig independent signals f 1 and f 2 at some amplitude sorry some amplitude, they are the two independent signals they are not interacting. But if you bring these two signals close by where delta f is very very small quantity a small quantity. So, there is a marginal difference between f 1 and f 2 very small quantity. In the time domain the signals would look something different and f 1 minus f naught and this is f naught plus f 1. So, we will have what is known as sum and difference frequency. Okay. So, if I plot them in the time domain because two signals x 1, one of frequency f 1 and two signals x 2, another signal f 2. So, this is x 1 plus x 2 may look something like this. I will draw the envelope first. So, they will decrease increase and so on. So, there is an amplitude max and an amplitude mean. So, if somebody was to listen to the signals, you he will hear what is the, this waning and waxing of noise, okay, increasing and decreasing of the amplitude level of the signal. You can hear it in terms of noise, you can hear feel it in terms of vibrations. So, this happens when two sources which are independent are very near to each other. So, if they are near to each other, if I have a analyze them in this frequency domain, 
very close f 1 f 2 okay. and they are then told to have give what is known as a phenomenon of beating. So, beating frequency is nothing but the difference between these two frequencies. So, signals beat if they are independent and and they are close to each other in frequency. But most important thing is independent. Suppose you have to monitor the health of one machine which generates a frequency f 1 and if there is a machine which is very close by I am generating a frequency f 2 where f 2 is close to f 1. When I measure the signal out of these two I will get what is this beating occurring, but to identify these beats you know what we have to do is we have to have a frequency resolution which we studied in the class on f of t delta f is nothing but 1 by capital T. So, this has to be very close by for example, one machine and how this happens practically let me tell you. Suppose, in a plant I have 5 blowers okay. and each of one of them is supposed to run at 1200 rpm. So, in rps or cycles per second this will be 1200 by 60 that is 20 rps or cycles per second or hertz represented as S z. So, in many of the case places you will see units of frequency given in either in rpm, rps, cycles per second, cycles per minute, hertz. So, they are all related only thing is that if you have to convert obviously, from minutes to seconds you have to divide by 60. Now, if these 5 blowers are running at 20 hertz and it so happens that one because there is a voltage fluctuation and one runs at 1230 rpm. Okay. So, the frequency corresponding to that will be 1230 by 60 that will be 20.5 hertz. So, that means, I have 4 frequencies from 4 blowers running at 1200 rpm at 20 hertz and 1 or frequencies are 1 signal, 1 signal at 20.5 hertz. So, particularly if you go to a plant room, you know this, this why this is running at 20.5 hertz is a different issue which we will not discuss, but if you uh, this could be an electrical voltage fluctuation or some uh, sort, but then the fact that one blower out of this 5 blowers is running at a slightly different speed will give rise to what is known as signal beating and I don't know many of you would have experience going to plant rooms where you know, a lot of industrial blowers are running at high speeds and just if there is a slight change in the speed of one this would give rise to what is known as the phenomena of beating. So, the, the way to identify beating is to do a frequency uh, domain analysis with a very fine frequency resolutions and they will you will see these two distinct next to each other. But another signal type occurs which is very similar to what is known as signal beating but this is known as modulation. In modulation what I, by the way before I go into modulation I will just give you one example of uh, beating see you see here I have two signals one at 10 hertz another at 10.5 hertz they have been sampled and they are plotted at every 
5 milliseconds. And you see if this was a sine wave of 10 hertz and another uh, very close by the sine hertz of 10.5 hertz, if you sum them up, this waveform, the composite waveform looks like this. That means, the amplitude is increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing and this would be the uh, bead frequency. Okay. And uh, one has to be careful about such uh, an, an analysis, okay, so that uh, we will not mistake it as a modulated signal or something. Now, let me tell you what happens in a modulated signal. Let us take the case of a bearing is a shaft. I have put a anti friction bearing, these are the races and there is a load on the shaft. I am not drawing the other part here. So, the reaction load and there is a strong amount of unbalance in the shaft. So, every rotation what happens? This bearing gets a load which is ok. So, the loading on the bearing is not steady, but because of this unbalance it is getting loaded. So, what happens if you look at the vibrations of this bearings, they will look ok. So, this is what is known as an amplitude modulated signal this is in time domain. So, to our naked eyes a modulated amplitude modulated signal looks very similar to a beating signal, but you see two frequencies are predominant here one this frequency is what is known as the carrier frequency. And this is this envelope is known as the modulated signal. So, by modulation I am, my transducer is going to capture this signal, but this envelope contains the information of the signal which is of interest to us. Okay. Such signals occur because of load variations, this occurs in gear boxes, this occurs in uh, uh, bearings and so on. And if you look at the signals, do the FFT of such signals modulated signals, you will come across signals which is known as F c plus minus F n. So, if I have a carrier frequency F c in the frequency domain, I will also have amplitudes at frequencies of F c plus F m and F c minus F m, okay. some amplitude of this amplitude modulator signal. So, this has the name. So, this is the carrier frequency and these are the modulated signal which are known as you know spaced at distance of f m. So, on, on either side of the carrier frequency. So, these are known as side bands side bands of the carrier frequency. Okay. 
Okay. So, one has to do such analysis. So, if you have an amplitude modulated signal, you will see carrier frequencies, which are in this case the amplitude modulation occurred because there is a load variation. I give you an example of a bearing signal which has been loaded on a shaft which there is a strong amount of unbalance. These things also will. So, if there was a defect in the gearbox. So, for example, in the bearing, and we will discuss this later on when we discuss about bearings. If there is a defect here in the race, and every time every revolution, this defect would give rise to a pulse. and this could be amplitude amplified during load. So, if you can do an envelope analysis, you can find out the defect frequency okay, on the carrier frequency. So, this sort of because the reason frequency and then you have to, to analyze this to the idea of finding out envelope analysis. There are many commercial softwares available to find out the envelope of a signal and which is nothing but signal demodulation. Okay. And later on we will see by a process called Hilbert transform, we can find out the envelope of such signals. Now, if I was to write the equation of this signals, say an amplitude modulated signal y t in general is a m sin 2 pi f c t, where a m equal to another may be sin 2 pi f m t. So, basically you are multiplying two signs. You know, sin a times sin b. So, you will have components sin a plus b or a frequency in a plus b terms and a minus b terms. So, this is the modulated amplitude and f c is the carrier frequency. and this is the modulator, but you see here in the case of modulations, the signals are related to each other. One is creating other unlike beats, where they are independent here they are related. So, obviously, <coughs> depending on the carrier frequency, the modulation would change. Okay, the modulation frequency would change and so on. Okay. So, this is an amplitude modulated signal, which particularly in condition monitoring occurs when we have bearing defects, when we have uh, gear defects. So, people do certain analysis, you know we discussed about uh, substrum analysis, by substrum analysis we can find out the uh, families of side bands in gear boxes and so on. So, the occurrence of side bands in a frequency spectrum indicates that there is some sort of a modulation. So, it is again our signal processing technique whether be it signal demodulation envelope analysis by which we can find out the those uh, carrier frequencies and the modulated frequencies. But uh, another type of modulation is known as the frequency modulation. See if I have a sine wave, okay. what I could do physically, see I could increase the frequency, decrease the frequency and then I could have, I will have another information being conveyed by this same signals. Frequency increasing again, decreasing again increasing and so on. Okay. So, so this is a high frequency 
range and again a high frequency. So, this is an and then if you see here the amplitude is not changing only thing is that change in the frequency. Okay. So, by changing the frequency I can convey a low frequency signal. Now, what is a low frequency signal? Signal this has a very high frequency carrier, but a low frequency is this is the in the time domain this could be the time domain which is repeating. So, through an FM signal without changing the amplitude I am changing carrying an information which is related to a slow speed event. Okay. In fact, frequency modulation trans signal transmissions have a higher signal to noise ratios, but in machinery condition monitoring, whenever there is a speed change So, there will be a frequency modulation. Okay. Of course, nowadays you know once we are talking about modulation, these are all in analog signals. So, I could have a pulse strain, an uniform pulse strain, wherein this is in time domain, some amplitude. I could again increase and decrease the time interval interval and convey an information. So, this is known as PCM or what is known as pulse code modulation. So, pulse code modulation is nothing but frequency modulation of digital signals unlike the analog signals. So, nowadays you know PCM technology used for signal recording, signal uh, digital signal transmission etcetera and even in uh, CBM right when we have a machine we put a transducer I can have a A to D which we are going to talk in the next class or in the few next classes down the road. Once we have this digital signal, I can do a modulation and convey or transmit a low frequency signal signal with a high frequency carrier. As you see here in frequency modulation there was no change in the amplitude unlike the amplitude modulator signal. So, signal to noise ratio is very good and the signal strength is maintained in frequency modulated signals and uh, that is the reason uh, when you listen to you know a 98.3 or any FM stations you know the 98.3 megahertz it is the signal uh, stations uh, carrier frequency on which a certain voice signal and a musical signal or whatever somebody is singing it is transmitted by FM waves. Okay. And I am sure all of you would have realized the signal strength clarity is much better in a frequency modulated radio signals which you hear rather than a amplitude modulated signal. So, this is uh, something which we have to keep in mind, but of course, nowadays if you are talking about digital transmission we can have an A to D, we can have a mm, digital signal, we can modulate it and then transmit it. So, to summarize we again both amplitude modulated, frequency modulated, pulse code modulated these are all dependent signal one is influencing the other. Whereas, the beats are because of independent sources.
So we have to keep this in mind when we are analyzing signals. But nevertheless, to decode these signals, we have to do what is known as an envelope analysis because the meaningful information there is the modulated signal, the other with the amplitude modulator or the frequency modulator, and not the carrier. So this is known as signal demodulation, which we will see how signal demodulation is used to remove the carrier frequency from the signal, so that we have the amplitude modulated signal. Okay. So, we will continue this in the subsequent uh, classes, we will have few more examples, then you will see how the modulations occur in bearings in particular and so on. Thank you.